بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وصلى الله على آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المظلومين المنتجبين قال الله الحكيم في القرآن الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا عتي الله وعتي الرسول وأولي الأمر منكم صلوات Time is almost up. It's almost time that we bid farewell to this Ashura ceremony and we wait for it to start up next year. We only have two nights left of this ceremony and then we have a day majalis and that's it. But the question here comes, what is it that I gain from the majalis of Abi Abdullah al Hussein? What is it that you learn for the, from the majalis of Abu Abdullah al Hussein? Is the majalis of Imam al Hussein specifically a ceremony where we come, recount some traditions, send a few Nara Haidiris, and recite the Masaib of Al Muhammad, and that's it? Or is there a greater message in the revolution that's known as the Karbarai revolution? Meaning, if we put our commemoration on a scale, on the one hand we have two months and eight days. On the other hand is the idea that we should be embodying the principles of Imam al Hussein's Karbala'i movement in every aspect of our life. <coughs> Why? Why? Simple answer. Because when Imam al Hussein rose up, he himself said that the reason for his rising up was to seek islah fi ummati jaddi. To seek reform and reformation in the nation of his grandfather. And the topic of these past few nights has been Karbala as the crucible for practical mysticism. Whereby we look at Karbala not just as a theory, and we don't look at Irfan just as a theory, we look at it more from a practical standpoint as lessons we can get from the Imam Hussein's movement. Lessons that we can get from Imam Hussein's movement has been the key for these lectures. When we talk about the movement of Ahl al-Bayt, we should notice that the movement of Ahl al-Bayt is not just for individual persons. It's not just for just it's not just for one family. Rather, it's for all of society. Every level of society needs to experience this Husseini revolution. We need to make sure that when we say La Baikya Hussein, that our hearts, our minds, every atom in our body makes that call. Because after all, when we look at Ahl al-Bayt, we see that they are embodiments of every positive characteristic that a human being can have. Recite salawat, please. <laughs> but it's not just the human being though. It's for all of society. You see, when we recount the tradition of Hadith al-Kisa, right? We say that Rasulullah came into the household of Fatima to Zahra and he said, my daughter, I'm not feeling well. Can you get me a Yemeni cloak that I can lie under it? She gets him the cloak. They, she lies under it. Imam al-Hasan comes. And he says to his mother, mother, I smell the fragrance of my grandfather, Rasulullah. Can I go join him? He joins him. Imam al Hussein comes. He says, Mother, I smell the fragrance of my grandfather, Rasulullah. Can I join him? She says, Yes, your brother and Rasulullah are lying down with each other. 
Go join them. When Amir al when Amir al Mu'mineen comes in, he says, I smell the fragrance of my brother, Rasulullah. And he says, she says, Yes, they're here. He is here with your children, and they're lying down together. So he asks permission to go join them, he joins them. Fatima to Zahra joins them. But the idea behind this, it's not that there were individual persons joining Ahlul Bayt or the Kisa. It wasn't just individual persons. It was a family that joined. It was not just individual persons. It was a family that joined. What's the difference between individual persons and the family is the idea of connection, the bond that they have. When the Rasulullah, let me give you an example. Let's say I want to build a house. Right? I get, and maybe in Pakistan you have bricks to build a house. And you get mortar to build a house. Is any formation of bricks called a house? Or is it a specific formation of it's a specific formation. And what about the mortar? The mortar serves to unify the bricks so that we can call this a whole. Look at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declares in Hadith al-Kisa. It's not just individual bricks. It's not just individual people. It's the connection between the people that's important. It's the connection between the people that makes this whole. Who is the connection? Fatima to Zahra. <laughs> Fatima to Zahra is the connection that this that makes this house a house. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about them to the angels, he doesn't say Muhammad, this is Muhammad, this is Ali, this is Fatima, this is Hassan Hussein. No. He doesn't say that this is Ali, this is his father-in-law Muhammad, this is his wife Fatima, and these are their two children. He does not say, this is Hassan or Hussein, this is his grandfather, and this is his father and his mother. The reason Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, his is home Fatima to wa abuha wa ba'aluha wa banuha, is to note that the woman is the connection point of all society. It's this woman, Fatima to Zahra, that gains the highest stature. It's this woman called Fatima to Zahra that serves as the mortar which unites the individuals of Ahlul Bayt together into one holistic reality. After all, after all, we do call ourselves the followers of Ahlul Bayt. And we need to make sure that we are true followers of Ahlul Bayt. True followers of Ahlul Bayt means that Imam Al Mahdi should want us the way we want him. We want him. We constantly make du'as and appeals that the Imam should return. But do we want him the way he wants us? Or does the other way around as well? We want him to come back. We want this flag to shine over every single household in the world. There's a famous statement by Ayatollah Aqil al gharabi He says, look, you can take Pakistan's flag, you can put it around any building in Pakistan you want without a problem. But you won't be able to put the Pakistani flag in India in India, you can take the Hindustani flag and you can put it around in every building. But you can't take that flag and put it in America in every building. The khususiyat of this flag is that you can put it in every building, every household, every capital, every center of human existence. Please recite us a lot. This flag... This flag must shine over every single household in this world. After all, we do say that Al-Abbas 
was the representative of Imam Ali in Karbala. What does it mean to say Allah Abbas was a representative of Imam Ali in Karbala? What does it mean? Simply put, when we say that the famous narration with regards to Imam Ali, where somebody came up to Imam Ali and said, Ya Ali, if you were to confine the Qur'an to a surah, what would it be? He said, Surah Al-Fatiha. Confine the Surah Al-Fatiha to a sentence. He says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Confine that to a, a, a letter, Ba. And he says, you know that dot ba, underneath the Ba, that's me. That dot underneath the Ba is Ali ibn Abi Talib. That dot underneath the Ba, that dot underneath the Ba, as Mawlana quoted earlier, is that same dot that says, I am more aware of the pathways of the heavens than I am the pathways of this earth. That dot is this man's father. You know, and I conclude with this adage, this story. There was a mujtahid of our time by the name of Ayatollah Sayyid Ali Qadi Tabatabai. Very big Arif. Alama Tabatabai, who was related to him, the, the compiler of Tafsir al Mizan, he says, I thought that I knew philosophy, but then when I stepped up, when I went to the dars of Sayyid Ali Qadi, I, I felt like I knew nothing of philosophy. Sayyid Ali Qadi, one of his khususiyat was that he was known to be a very high-ranking Arif. Very high-ranking Arif. The stance that he got in Irfan was such that people said that he was at the level of Tawheed. Sayyid Ali Qadi Tabatabai was that high. You know how he reached that level? They said that he went to the shrine of Al-Abbas and he made a dua. He had a special form of Nadi Ali that he recited and his dua became accepted. It was his visitation of Al-Abbas that made him this great honor. Never underestimate the ziyarah of Al-Abbas. Never underestimate that. Because remember, when you go to Karbala, it is recommended first that you do ziyarah of Al-Abbas, then you go to Imam Hussein. It's as if Rasulullah, when he says, Ana Madinatul Ilm, wa Aliyun Babuha, that Rasulullah is a city of knowledge and Ali is his gate. Whoever enters the city must enter through its gate. It's like Imam al Hussein is saying, I am a city and an Abbas is my gate. Whoever wants to enter me must enter through my gate. And that gate is Al Abbas. Al Abbas. How can we commemorate this great individual? It's very hard to put words, to describe his greatness in words. Babul Hawaij Abbas. Sakai Sakina Abbas. On the day of Ashura, on the day of Ashura, Al Abbas keeps on asking Imam Al Hussein. I won't take much of your time. He keeps on asking Imam Al Hussein for permission to go fight. Imam Al Hussein says, "No, brother, you are the standard bearer of my army. How can you go and fight and sacrifice your life right now?" He keeps on saying, "No." Finally, there comes a time where there's nobody left. Al Abbas approaches Abu Abdullah Al Hussein, and he asks permission to go fight. Imam al Hussein says, no. But if there's something you can do, you can go get water for the children of Al Muhammad. Imam al Hussein, and I close with this tradition, he tells Abbas that first you should go to Zainab and get her permission to go. Al Abbas goes to say to Zainab, and Lady Zainab, I can it reminds him of a time when Imam Ali was still alive. It is said that when Imam Ali was alive in his lifetime, he used to kiss Lady Zainab's head in her arms. She never had the courage to ask her father why he did that. But when Imam Ali was about to breathe his last, she went up to his fa- her father and asked, Father, why do you do that? And he, his response was, Zainab, 
Zainab, there will be a time where there will not be a veil on your head. There will be a time where your hands will be tied in chains. When your hands will be tied in chains. Lady Zainab says to Abbas, Abbas, I thought that as long as I had a brother like Abbas alive, nobody would come to me. Nobody would take my veil off. Nobody would put me in chains. Go, Abbas, go. Now I know my, hair, my veil will be stolen. My hands will be tied in, in, in a rope. Abbas go, Al-Abbas goes, Al-Abbas goes, he goes to the river bank. The enemies flee from every direction. They don't know how to attack Al-Abbas. Al-Abbas reaches the river bank. He goes down into the, he goes down, comes off his horse and he clutches, he makes a cup out of his arms. He puts his arms in the water, he looks at it, then he throws the water back saying that there is no thirst. He can bear all thirst. As long as his master is thirsty, Al Abbas is not going to drink water. Summary is that Abbas is not going to drink water. Al Abbas fills the step, fills the water bag with water, and he goes. Put yourself in Abbas's shoes now. Put yourself in his position. Al Abbas has the standard. On one hand, he has the the mushk, and he goes. Nobody can approach Abbas. All of a sudden, somebody says, listen, if water reaches Imam al Hussein's camp now, all Yazid will do away with all of you. They start attacking Abbas. It is said that Al-Abbas, he went through an area that was wooded in Karbala. And there was one man standing, hiding behind a tree. He came from behind Al-Abbas and he severed his right hand. Another person came from the left side and he severed Abbas's left hand. Arrows started coming from every direction. Every direction, an arrow pierced the water bag. An arrow pierced the eye of Al Abbas. There was an arrow that pierced his neck. His body was covered with arrows. To the extent that when Abbas fell, he called out for Imam Al Hussein to come help him. When he came, when the Imam came, Al Abbas couldn't see because the blood from one eye had went into the other. The blood from one eye had went into the other. Imam al Hussein tells him, This is your brother Abbas. This is your brother. He takes Al Abbas's head and he puts him on his lap. Al Abbas moves his head away off of Imam al Hussein's lap. Imam al Hussein asks him, Why did you do that, O oh brother? And the response comes, Ya Aba Abdullah, there will be a time when you will be lying on the sands of Karbala and there will be nobody, nobody who, who's, whose lap you can put your head in. Al Abbas has two wasiyah, two wasiyah. One wasiyah is, is that Abam Hussein should not take his, his body back into the water, into the tents, because he is afraid that he, will, he has shame. And he does not want to face Sakina without water. The other condition that Al Abbas puts forth is that tell Zainab that I am sorry. I was the one who mounted her on the horse to Karbala. I will not be there to mount her back home. Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi rajiun.